Deadlifting is one of the most rewarding exercises and a true test of raw and static power. It's practiced in strongman, it's practiced in powerlifting, it's practiced every day in the gyms and in everyday life. However, people still get it wrong sometimes. In this video, we're gonna go through five mistakes people make when deadlifting and hopefully, if you make a mistake, we can go ahead and correct it there and then. And this move can get a bad reputation because of people ego lifting in the gym and then getting a sore back from doing so. Lucky for you, we're gonna go through them exact mistakes people make right now. Number one is people not pulling the slack out of the bar. If you listen to this bar, click here, nice and easy. That is called the slack. When we pull the slack, that shifts our upper back in a tighter position, being able to handle and brace with that load. And not pulling the slack can lead to rounding or yanking of the bar, which doesn't feel too pretty. I oftentimes coach this as just giving a gentle tug to the bar first, holding that tension and then lift without letting go of that slack pull. That also prevents the arm from bending and yanking the bar up as well. Another way to think of this is imagine your arm as string and your hands as hooks, like a crane. In a crane, it doesn't just yank the object up straight away. It takes the slack out first, builds that tension, and then lifts the object. We are the same, so make sure step one is you're pulling the slack. Mistake number two is people start with their hips way too high, resulting in using too much back. And without a proper brace, this can go horribly wrong. You see, I had to think of it like a clutch on a car, even though I can't drive. I think I'm quite cheap saying this with my wrong color license. But on a clutch on a car, you find that bite. When you find that bite, the car reacts differently. There's some torque in there. It wants to rev and go. Our bodies are the same. When you find that bite and that sweet spot with your hips, your hamstrings engage, your butt engages, and you're able to gather that strength and tension we need to execute that lift. Choo choo. So starting with your hips a bit too high can look like this. And that for me just screams out you're using your back as much as you can to execute that movement. If you're a beginner, this is not what we want. Instead, like shown before, we define the bite, get the hips down and down and down, and then pull. That can also transfer beautifully into mistake number three. Starting with your shins too far away from the bar. Now, to get technical for a moment, we have what's called the center of mass. And when that bar starts too far away from our body, we disrupt that, we ruin that, resulting in that lift being 10 times harder than it needs to be. I'd go as far as saying it's physically impossible to execute your one rep max when the bar is too far out. Because all you're gonna do is leak power, increase chance of injury, or result in what you see online and have a few earthquakes on the way up when your legs are shaking and you can't stop. And then probably injury. To stop that from happening, we're gonna use two things. One is use our back and lats to pull that bar in. And second, just visualize where the bar is amongst your midfoot. If your bar is starting, near your toes and by the time you come down to the bar you need to call an uber between your shins and the bar that's too far instead i like to go for mid shoelace and by the time you come down and screw yourself in position where your shins meet the bar after pulling the slack you got a good setup so for this one try and visualize the bar literally cutting your foot in half and chances are your deadlift position is already getting better. My next one is the lockout of the barbell. During the top of the lift, we have what's called the lockout, where the bar travels past the knees up towards the hips. At this point, you do see people leaning too far forwards, and that just puts unnecessary strain and pressure on the lower back, because you're not locked out properly. It's like standing up from a sitting down position and then standing up to there. What I always say to my male clients is when you bring the bar up, try and bring your nuts forwards and pretend there's someone trying to stick a thumb up your backside. Automatically, if you're me, you're not gonna want that thumb up there. So what you're gonna do is use your glutes to tighten up and secure that spot. Hence, locking out your bar a lot better. And it also enables for a much more stronger end point before going back down and resetting. The glutes play a massive role when it comes to deadlifts. It's like their powerhouse. So a little cheeky tip for you, if you want to improve your deadlift and lockout, look at building your posterior strength, your glutes, your hamstrings. And you'll have so much more success when locking out your bar. And you will also decrease chance of injury as well. And my final one is lifting too heavy too often. Look, I get it. You want a stronger deadlift and you want to impress your friends at the gym. You want to impress your gym crush at the gym and you want to try and 
max out every time you do your deadlifting session. However, the body doesn't respond like that. We need to introduce ourselves to volume, recovery, and strength surrounding the areas as well, like leg strength, back strength, core strength. If you're lifting too heavy too often, you ain't got to get a chance to practice the actual skill of the movement. Don't forget, deadlifting is a skill. It's not just a fancy movement that we like to do to impress our friends. My best advice for this is to have separate days in the gym where you focus on weight on the bar, volume, variations. If you're just having one mega session a week and you're just maxing out RPE 9 or like maximum effort every time, it's not going to give you a chance to recover and grow. So maybe have a primary deadlifting day and a secondary deadlifting day where you focus on more reps, light load, a variation, and so your central nervous system can actually have a break. And trust me, I've made these mistakes before in the past. When I first started deadlifting or even strength training, I thought I was the dog's danglies at deadlifting. Whereas I just lifted with just brute strength and force and a lot of ego. <laughs> I didn't appreciate or respect the skill. It was only when I started powerlifting that I really appreciate what it takes to deadlift efficiently. And also what I didn't know as well. If you've seen my gym video in the past, it looks absolutely ugly. There's no slack pull. There's excessive rounding of the upper back and lower back. And it's just me trying to look hard as hell. People in the gym must be thinking, why? Why is he doing that for? Who the hell is that? But you get my point. So grip, we can either have a double overhand grip, which is fine to an extent, and it's what's used as the standard grip. I'm also gonna have a word about whip as well. So when you're trying to adjust your grip, I see far too many people not take it seriously, and the bar just ends up being wonky as hell when they lift. It results in the bar sinking to one side and being all wonky donkey. So make sure you grab evenly on the bar, for Christ's sake. For me, a good place to start with your grip is when you have your stance, have your hands either side of your legs, arms nice and long, reach down for the bar, and I'm just on the start of the nail where the bar gets rough. An alternative grip you can use is what's called a mixed grip. This is traditionally used when the loads get heavier and grip becomes more of an issue. For this, I like to teach strongest palm to the ceiling. Lads, it's what arm you right with. So that looks a little something like this. Same width, grabbing the bar, and that's more of a locked in grip for when the load gets heavier. Now, there is what's called a hook grip. However, if you're a beginner, even intermediate or deadlifting, this might be uncomfortable for you. A hook grip is where you wrap your thumb around the barbell and use your fingers to wrap over your thumb and lock in position. This is favored amongst powerlifters with a sumo stance or have generally longer thumbs than me. Myself, I've never used it before. I don't plan on using it anytime soon. It can make your thumbs bleed and you're gonna get the bar all messy and bloody. No one wants that. You can even use grips. If you don't want to focus on the powerlifting elements, you can focus on using grips as long as you don't rely on them. I tend to recommend these bad boys right here. These were used in my gym bag video and these cost around 50, 10, 15 pounds from Amazon. That eliminates the grip out of the equation and just helps you focus on the motion. Also useful for lat pull downs, cable rows, dumbbell rows, holding a heavy dumbbell for a long period of time. Definitely recommend. Yep. A stronger grip can really help with deadlifts. And if it's currently weak as hell, don't stress. You can do exercises such as farmer's carries, hanging from a bar, training your forearms, or just increased exposure to deadlifting and manual handling altogether. My first job was literally carrying flat pack furniture in houses, and it was damn heavy. What it did do though, is give me a good foundation of grip strength. And you better believe every time I go shopping, it's one trip with about a million bags in my hand. That also can actually help with grip too. If you focus on these five points, and I'm gonna even put a checklist in the description, of a deadlift and setup that you can use, you're gonna see your deadlift flourish and grow into much more efficient and stronger movement. We're gonna stay off Instagram viral videos and we're gonna give ourselves a great deadlift and setup. So guys, that wraps up today's video of five mistakes people make when deadlifting. I don't wanna see you do these in the gym after watching this video. If you found today useful, click the little bell below. Make sure to take a screenshot of the description of the checklist and let me know if it helps for next time. Stay strong and I'll see you in the next video.